Hey guys, Auspiciousy here and welcome to episode 15 of my TCW series. Now of course this is the go home show for the next pay-per-view and I feel like it's kind of an integral show uh, in certain ways. Of course we've got another, I think we have one more match to book before the pay-per-view. Uh, obviously not really having a lot of time to build this sort of storyline but I think it kind of makes sense in its own right. Um, and basically, we need one of our main eventers to have a storyline. Well, not a storyline, but like a match. So we're going to try and make a bit of a an impromptu storyline happen. Anyway, let's run the show. We've got two pre-show matches. Starting off with a 64C six-man tag. In a pre-show bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Matt Hocking, Dazzling Dave Diamond, and Benny Benson defeated Jeremy Courtney and the Latino Kings in 10-15 when Benny Benson defeated Rudy Velasquez by pinfall with a shockwave from next year. Uh, only worker improvements is for Triple D improving in technical skills. We then go into our second pre-show match, which gets a 70 C+. In a pre-show bout that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat, Killer Shark, Eddie Peak, and Kirk Jamison defeated Elliot Thomas and the Dynamite Express in 956 when Kirk Jamison Defeated Sid Collier by pinfall with a Kirk hold. And then as you'd expect, Eddie Peake was the in-ring, well, the best in-ring performer carrying everybody else. And we also have Eddie Peake improving in performance skills there. So that's really good. Uh, he seems to, you know, be improving quite a bit. Um, we don't really have a storyline for him. We kind of do, but it's not really working out the way I want it to. I'm thinking about giving him a match against uh, Dazzling Dave Diamond uh, at the pay-per-view, um, but we haven't built to it, so it might just be like an impromptu pay-per-view match. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the opening of the TV show gets a 57C+. We're starting off with a match here. In a poor match, Titan defeated Mr. Lucha 3 in 9.51 by pinfall with a Titanic choke slam. Uh, and apparently they did not click, so it made for an awkward bout, uh, which is a little bit disappointing because if they didn't have that negative chemistry, they might have actually pulled a pretty good rating here, at least the C. Um, and it's a 10-minute match, so Titan can do 10-minute matches uh, in singles competition. So I'm, I'm going to assume that they can actually do the behemoths this is. They can actually do 10-minute tag team matches Um well, at least that's my, my thought process behind it now. Um, I think he's got D plus stamina, and I think Killer Shark has D. So they're not too far off. I think they can do it. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to see at the pay-per-view in the next episode. Moving on to another match, a 75 B minus. In about they had good heat and decent wrestling, Joshua Taylor and Ricky Dale Johnson defeated American Buffalo and Troy Tornado in 9.59 when Joshua Taylor... Defeated American Buffalo by submission with a butterfly lock. And we also have American Buffalo improving in technical skills there. Uh, but yeah, so our next match to be booked in is going to be... I'm not sure if... Do we have it booked in already? No, we don't. Okay. So it's going to be Ricky Dale Johnson taking on Troy Tornado. And I think that's a, a pretty good match considering they're both main eventers. Um, obviously, Troy's a little bit younger than Ricky Dale... Johnson, so I'm not really too sure who I'm going to actually give the win to in this match. Yeah, I think RDJ has a lot higher popularity, um, but again, I do want to, you know, use these older guys such as Buffalo, RDJ, and sort of rub their popularity off onto uh, some of the other members of the roster. It's worth noting that RDJ He's got really good entertainment stats, so his promos, I would say, can get him over pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, actually, in theory, let's have a look here for a second. Let's book another match in. Let's go Joshua Taylor versus American Buffalo. I think that's a pretty good match as well, and that should almost fill out the uh, the pay-per-view with matches, I think. And it's a similar sort of thing. You know, Buffalo's quite old. I would say their popularity is pretty even. I think Buffalo's on about a C. And I think Joshua Taylor's a C plus. Maybe a B minus now. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, not a, not a bad tag team match, considering it only went for 10 minutes. Um, okay, well, this is the this is the promo that I was going to do uh, for all the pre-bookings. So basically, of course, Taylor and Ricky Dale Johnson cut their promos on Buffalo and Troy Tornado. And uh, essentially, they'll set the matches up. So I probably should have done the pre-booking for those ones uh, with this promo. It makes a bit more sense, and that will, definitely was my thought process behind it. Uh, but the angle, the promo here, picking up a 93A rating, which is very good. Wow. We then go into a 77B, and it was a bit of a nothing match. More just a, a match to give Mark Speed some momentum. And about that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Mark Speed defeated Bulldozer Brandon Smith in 1027 by submission with a cross arm breaker. And these guys pulled off a 77B. No storyline. Speed with an earring performance of 72. And then Brennan Smith. Uh, he recovered from his injury during the week. Uh, he picked up an earring performance of 59. Uh, and yeah, Bulldozer's also improving in technical and flying skills. That's a really crazy rating. I think Mark, Mark Speed might be getting over. I'm, I should have checked, but I did do an auto push on the roster after last episode. Um, Jay Cord has gone up to upper mid card, and I'm not sure if he has. He might have gone up to upper mid card. I'll have to check that. Wow. We then go into an 87B plus rated match, tag team match, in about that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. The New Wave defeated the Canadian Animals in 2018 when Scout defeated Freddie Huggins by submission with a special force. And Scout seemed off his game as well. And they pulled an 87B plus. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the New Wave is uh, very, very over. Any worker improvements? Yes, Guide in performance skills and Freddie Huggins in technical. We then move into another 77B. Wow, these are some really good match ratings. And this, is, again, was just a bit of a, a throwaway match uh, to, again, build Wolf Hawkins you know, up a little bit going into the pay-per-view uh, with his match against Benny Benson. I think Benny Benson was on commentary for this match as well. But yeah, in about that had good heat and decent wrestling, Wolf Hawkins defeated Giant Tanner in 936 by Pinfall with a full moon rising. 87 in-ring performance from Wolf there. And he's also improving in performance skills, so that's perfect. And a really good match rating. Uh, after the match, we have uh, an interesting angle. Of course, I said Benny Benson was on commentary. We get an 80B for this, I think it was Overness, this angle. But yeah, Wolf Hawkins and Benny Benson are in, in the ring arguing. Um, Hawkins, you know, loses it and attacks him. Uh, they then go go to the outside, of course. You know, Benson was on commentary. So Wolf Hawkins says, you want to be on commentary? Well, I'll put you through the table. And yeah, he drives him through the announce table at ringside. And well, let's just say Hawkins is looking very dominant going into the pay-per-view. We then go into an 80 into an 84 rated angle, 84B+, plus, uh, just consisting of the four members of our main event, eight-man tag, uh, the face team, of course, Rocky Golden, Sammy Back, Mighty Mo, and Human Arsenal, and of course, Rocky Golden coming across well, and Human Arsenal improving in acting, so that's good. The main event itself does really well. We've had some really good match ratings. 86B plus, in about they had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Aaron Andrews, Brian Vesey, and New Legacy defeated Rocky Golden, Sammy Back, Mighty Mo, and Human Arsenal in 25-20 when Brian Vesey defeated Mighty Mo by pinfall by using underhanded tactics. Again, Brian Vesey, he loves to cheat. He loves to cheat. Uh, you know, will he be able to cheat? This coming weekend at the pay per view, in his, you know, ultimate decider match against Sammy Back. Now, if you look down here, Rocky Golden has sustained a retrousse nose, uh, so I'm assuming that's like a broken nose or a bloody nose or something like that, which isn't great because he is the main event of the pay per view, 
taking on Aaron Andrews for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, so that's a little bit scary. Uh, but we do advance three storylines there. Jay Cord is also improving in Rumble skills. Like I mentioned, he's uh, he's up to a upper mid-carder at the moment. An upper mid-carder. So yeah, really happy with that. That's a really good rating. We have one, one more angle before the show finishes. There's the Retrus Nose. A 99A star. And I think this was Overness as well. And yeah, having just picked up the victory, Andrews and Vessi celebrate in the ring. Of course, they're going over the top. Essentially, they're running around like they've just won the, the pay-per-view matches, you know, for the pay-per-view. Um, but ultimately, it was just an eight-man tag match. And of course, Vessi essentially got the pinfall victory on a mid-carder that was not Sammy back. So, yeah, they're acting like idiots, of course. They're the heels. You sort of expect that. Um, but I'm really happy to get a 99A star on the, the final angle here. Overall show rating gets a 76B-, minus, which is currently what our popularity is in America. So as you can see, we haven't actually lost any popularity. Um, so essentially, we're still holding on to the national company size. Which, I don't know, it's kind of a, a detriment because I want to drop down a cult and see just what, you know, what's going to happen. Of course, the money is a big thing. I think you gain, you definitely gain more money from being national. Um, so I just want to sort of suss that out, see what's going to happen with it and uh, go from there. But at the moment, I guess our shows are just a little bit too good in in regards to, to dropping down because, you know, we are slowly going to, well, we're slowly dropping popularity. Uh, but with good shows like this, yeah, it's a weird one. Anyway, as you can see, increased our popularity in these seven regions of Canada there as well. And I'm pretty happy with that Go Home show. I think it was probably one of our best shows we've ever done. Just a lot of consistent Bs uh, and B pluses as well. Now, first things first, Rocky Golden's contract, uh, not contract, his injury. Let's have a look. So he is working through the retruce nose. How long that's going to take? Because we've got, what, f was it four or five days? Four days. Four days until the pay-per-view. For some reason, I don't think he's going to be fully fit. Uh, which doesn't matter too much, because regardless, he's going to wrestle, even uh, working through the injury. But, yeah. TV rating for Total Wrestling gets a 6.94. Uh, we've also got Lauren Easter's contract running out. Now, she's very, very talented in terms of uh, women's wrestling. And I do want to bring in a women's division at some stage. I didn't really think that we'd be doing it in the first year. Um, so like probably the first 60 episodes or whatever. But with her contract running out, she's going to be off contract by the looks of it. Because North of the Border aren't actually offering her a new one. She's not over in America, but she's very over in Canada. Um, so maybe we could do a couple of shows over in Canada at some stage. Anyway, something for me to think about. Uh, it's worth noting that Mainstream Hernandez, Jimmy Hernandez, I talked about him in the previous episode. We had offered him a contract. Uh, SWF basically offered about, f I think it was 3,500 more than us. And uh, I didn't really want to... Didn't really want to try and match that or better that. I had to better it, essentially, to get him. And uh, like I said, I want to suss out ourselves down at Colt in terms of the company size before I, you know, decide to start spending more money than we can really afford. Anyway, uh, one more thing to look at. I wanted to look at Mark's speed. So he's still a mid-carder. Yeah, and it still wants him to be a mid-carder. But that was a really good match against Bulldozer Brandon Smith. His popularity is essentially the same. Hasn't dropped. Um, his skills, I think they've gone up a little bit. Yeah, not really too much in the top row. Um, wow, that's psychology. Oh, it was the psychology spot, wasn't it? Uh, from a few episodes ago. It's up to a 79B. From a B-. minus. So that's probably why... He's a very, very solid worker. I, I th could see him being main eventer at some stage. He's only 33, so he's sort of around the, the rocky golden age. 
Um, still international champion, as you can see on the left of the screen there. And down here as well. Um, now, the one thing I'm looking forward to before we end the episode, I just want to go over this. I want the prestige of our titles to go back up. For our mid-card title being 57C-, minus, that's quite some way under the max sort of level of prestige. The World Heavyweight is down to an 83B+. Plus, uh, and I want that to be an A, uh, if not an A-star, as soon as possible. Obviously, there are things we could do to make that happen. And that would probably mean taking the title off Aaron Andrews. Um, which we might do at the pay-per-view. You know, Rocky... Rocky could easily be the World Heavyweight Champion once again. Uh, it would be his fifth reign of the title as well. And finally, the Tag Team titles, they're not too bad. 65C. Uh, but again, we haven't actually... Well, we've only defended them the one time. So, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, hopefully after the pay-per-view... Uh, we'll check that again, and they'll all be up at a much higher level of prestige. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode. If you could drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you hit the post turn on post notifications icon, the little bell, uh, that should hopefully keep you up to date with these episodes coming out in the future. And apart from that, guys, take it easy, and goodbye.